Hello everyone and welcome to another home stream. I hope you guys are all staying safe uh, and you know staying active and engaged. Um, we're very excited because we're just looking at all of the submissions you guys did for our monthly painting challenge. Uh, they're amazing and they're looking fantastic. So I'm very excited to go through uh, along with my fellow AMG staffers picking out our favorites. I think it's going to be really hard. There's a lot of really great entries. We're looking forward. Dallas is going to be announcing our second painting challenge on his stream on Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific. So be sure to tune in and check out the social medias to find out what our next challenge will be. And I believe in the next week we'll be announcing the winner or the 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 chosen contestants, the people that we like the best um, in terms of different things. So we'll be kind of showing off our staff picks uh, is the right way to say that um, coming up. So with that in mind, um, today we're going to be doing something a little fun, a little different. We wanted to take this week and kind of step back from the characters and dive into doing some terrain stuff. Um, so Dallas has a really fun treat for you guys on his stream on Thursday. Today I wanted to take the opportunity to kind of go through how to paint a big chunky piece of terrain. Uh, specifically the NYC commercial truck which I've turned into a garbage truck. I've had a lot of conversations with some people who I paint with and who I focus with. Um, hang out and hobby with over virtual zooms and stuff and they've been like okay well I don't have an airbrush how do I tackle these things so it's not miserable how do I approach this kind of large scale miniature and make it fast and quick because let's be honest you can take all the time in the world to make amazing looking terrain there's a lot of people who love to do that but if you're like me or other people you might just feel like okay I want my terrain to look really cool on the table but in the end I know the Hulk is going to throw it and I'm going to take it off the table pretty quick so I just want it to look good enough on the table to set the scene so I can focus on the characters. And that's another big thing is kind of finding that balance between making sure that the characters you've spent your time on and that are the stars of the show don't get lost in all of this like crazy looking terrain. So we're just going to be going through some really fast and effective techniques to get some really nice looking like basic tabletop terrain on the table that hopefully will help you speed through these things in a way and then provide a launching point for you to go further into it as you want to start to like do detailing like uh, scuffing and dirt um, adding extra layers of highlights and stuff like that. So today is just a very, it's a very uh, beginner to like low intermediate kind of style of let's get a terrain piece painted, let's do it quick, let's not lose our minds over it, and let's have something that we're going to be really happy to put on the table so that we can fight over it uh, in the next game that we play. So with that, I'm going to switch the camera off of my face. We're going to go here. You're going to notice that I had to totally uh, zoom out on this bad boy because it's so big. So. Um, I debated a little bit about talking about doing an airbrushing tutorial for terrain because you can paint terrain really quickly with an airbrush. You can get really good results and good fades. But at the end of the day, I know most people don't have an airbrush. So what we wanted to do is I wanted to just take the opportunity to kind of focus on you don't have an airbrush. How do you do this really quick, really easy? Um, and the, the way that we're going to do it right now is so I've, I've primed the miniature. And then what I did is I took uh, a yellow undercoat spray. Um, I did use my airbrush for this because it's just what I had and I didn't have any rattle can spray that matched the color I wanted. But all you would have to do is go out and find a rattle can, a spray, a spray paint that matched the color that you wanted that was safe to use on plastics, of which there are tons. Um, and then after priming the miniature, base coat it with a really light dusting of that color. Um, you don't want to like blow it on too heavy. Um, you want to watch like goops and stuff because some, some spray paints will come out a little thicker than others so you want to test. You just want to do a really smooth coat. Now once you have your base coat done, this is what we have now. So my truck um, here is basically base coated, so I'm ready to go. I even did a little bit of silver spray on the back because I want that to be metal. I had a bit of overspray here that you'll see. That's not a big deal. I can go back through and cover that up. I'm just trying to like burn through this stuff pretty quick so that I can move on to the next step. Um, so starting with this, my first step is I'm just going to do a wash. So what I did is I took, um, we're a little far away, but ink, ink tense ochre. And I took Intense Chestnut and I just kind of created this like really kind of yellow brown wash, which you can see right here. And you're also going to notice that here's my normal painting brush. Here's the brush I'm going to be using today. So big brush, right? That's how you're going to get through this stuff really quick. It's how it's going to help you do stuff. I also have kind of my medium sized flat brush. Um, but these brushes are going to mean that I'm going to be able to cover a lot of area really quick. And um, I'm not really going to have to worry about the details. So I'm just going to get in there and I'm basically just going to start applying this wash on really heavy um, because I want this thing, obviously as a garbage truck, it's to be really like, dirty and kind of grimy and stuff. But I'm just looking to like start tinting that color down and to create this, to create this look of shading and uh, some different highlights. And of course, again, because it's a garbage truck, 
that can be really, really rough in terms of um, how much I'm adding to the colors and stuff like that. I'm going to add a little water to my mix. I, of course, went with my classic. I'm painting a character mix and totally didn't make enough wash. But that's okay. We can always make more. So we're just going to blast through that. A little bit of that to it. Then we're going to come back. Again, we're just going to... There we go. We're just going to slot this on really fast, really hard. So... It's just all about like kind of just slopping this on, using it kind of like a mop. It's okay if it pools a little bit. We're just looking to shade to create some nice differentiation and stuff. If I get it on the steel, that's fine too. It's kind of like burn through it. Now we can go through and we can dry brush it. We can like make it darker if we want. Dry brushing is kind of the last step. I don't know if we'll get to that today. I might have to go grab the hair dryer just to kind of get this ink this ink wash to dry a lot quicker but it's all about just using that big brush and if you need to you can go back in and use some of your smaller brushes a little bit more obviously this is kind of like one of my kids hobby brushes their paint brushes that they use so it's obviously not got the greatest of tips but that's okay because we're just kind of slopping on wash come around here Again, I'm just looking for that kind of like nice shading, and if it's a little streaky, that's okay, because this thing would be kind of grimy and dirty. So, we're okay with a little pooling, we're okay with that stuff. I'm going to build it around. Come to the front here. See how we're already tinting that color and kind of bringing it down into more of an ochre, which is great. I'm going to kind of try to avoid some of those pools down there. So, here we go. Hopefully, everyone's excited in the U.S. I believe uh, a whole deluge of the stuff we've been painting and talking about on the streams is going to be hitting the store shelves soon or hidden curbside pickup as it were for most of the states I think. Um, those things still are. A whole lot of hobby stuff coming this way. Ready to go. Alright. So we've got our wash down. I might darken this up just because I want it to be like really gritty and grimy. So I'm going to take more of my, I'm actually going to take this Inktense Brown. That's black, that's not brown. That's violet, that would look really weird. There we go. Take some of this Inktense Brown. And this is going to be really dark. So I'm probably going to switch brushes here. I'm going to go to my smaller flat some of that in. And then, back through. I'm just kind of like muss this up a little bit and see what it looks like. It might be a little too dark, but that's okay. Like dab it off. And this is one of the fun things about terrain painting. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm just going to create some texturing and stuff. So I'm going to apply this wash. And then I'm going to take my paper towel. I'll probably just dab a little bit of it off. And this will create a nice little antiquing effect. It'll give me kind of that like dirt and grime. So I can just go through and like tap. 
And you can see how I'm getting like this nice speckling and modeling now that's going on because of these two inks working together. Um, and so it already looks kind of textury and, and gross and grimy. And this is kind of what we want to go on for our, for our truck. So we want to make sure that the shadows and kind of that texture is right there because then the only other step that we really need to take to finish to finish this truck body, this yellow, is we'll just go through and we'll do a quick dry brush. And at that point, we can basically call it good. Um, in terms of just being a piece of terrain that's ready to be thrown and messed with on the tabletop. So just little tricks to kind of get that look going on to make it look right. You'll see now that I'm just really not worrying about making a smooth coat because what I want to go back through, I just want to like kind of tap it in. So you can see it like it doesn't absorb evenly so you get like this nice kind of like dirty texture and you can absorb more or less all that stuff like it really is in your control as to like if I want a little less I can do a little less if I want to leave a little more I can leave a little more I've got an errant pet hair on there so I'll pull that off the dangers of working in your house filled with pets and maybe I decided that I took too much off so I go back through and put some more on and this is just really a process and it can be as fast as you want slow as you want. I'm just kind of being particular here to show kind of the differences and how you can approach it. And you can get in there and you can really start to mix these wet inks on. And you know, light, like things in the world aren't crisp, they aren't clean. This is definitely not what I would call a comic book style approach um, or an animated approach where you're going to get like a lot cleaner colors. Um, what we're looking for is we're kind of looking for that New York City like urban grime and decay, right? So you really want to get in there and just make everything like really messy, really dirty, really kind of stained. Give it a lot of like character, a lot of life, a lot of love. And at some point, you know, your your little tappy thing will, or your your uh, paper towel will get like worn out and used up, and then you'll have to go to the next one. Um, there are a couple other different ways to like achieve this technique, like you can use salt weathering, you can stipple, um, so tons of options. Right now I'm just using this because it was there and I thought it would be fun. It's not what I planned on, but you know it's coming through really nice. And you can see how we're just getting this really nice and gross you know, garbage truck, like one that's been doing its job for a while. It's been working hard to clean up the, the city streets from all of these different superhero battles and stuff. So we're just gonna go in here, and mess around with them more. And hopefully you know what else this kind of shows is that you don't have to worry about like super great clean technique on a lot of things. You can you can put a little life and stuff into your into your miniatures. You can be a little unclean. And we talked about this last time too when we were looking at the bases. And uh I'm working on the stone base and stuff like that and, and the stains there and stuff. One of the really fun things about working on, you know, natural occurring things like things that wind up outside, streets, stone, all that stuff. Like nature doesn't make things perfect. People try to make things perfect and then nature comes in and says, well, perfect actually looks kind of like this. You know, it looks random and speckly and spotty. So now you can see we've got like this nice grimy, gritty kind of look going on with the with the truck. And that's exactly what we wanted. So while that dries, I think, because I'm pretty happy with that. Inside of this other pet hair that we got going on, because you know, pet hairs. Pet hairs everywhere. Especially today. Come on, hair. There. This is the other best thing. Pull off a hair and mess it up. Meh. Go right back in and fix it. There. You can't even tell. It's just gritty and grimy and textured. Okay. So with that kind of done, 
We can move on while that dries. We can do our back cab here. So really what I could do is clean up kind of where the steel got the overspray on it. Um, I might just do, I might do just that. And I could just go on with the same kind of browns and stuff that I'm using to paint the cab of the truck, the body of the truck. And that would give it kind of a stained and rusted look, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go a little different here. And so we are going to clean up this area here. I'm just going to use that silver base that I put down as kind of a quick undercoat to allow this to go a little quicker. So let's kind of clean up these areas. I'm a little careful, but you can also see how, you know, it goes a lot faster if you use a much bigger brush. This might take a coat or two over those yellows because the silver is a little bright. It's a bit opaque. That's okay. I don't want to overwork the area. We just want to like smooth it out. And even though these bristles on this brush are really like grainy and kind of rough, again, that's just going to give me some texture and life. So I'm not as worried about blending it out as I might be otherwise. So I'm looking for a really like rough, real world kind of look. Just bang it in there. And I might go through while I got this. Get these little wheels. Just kind of using really rough stabs to just get in there. Cover it up. Well, I'm sure most people have been checking out the social media, but Josh posted the panel to play for Thanos on our website and tweeted and Facebooked and Instagrammed about it. If you haven't checked that out and you're curious what Thanos might be having in store, check it out. I know a lot of people were really hopeful that I'd spoil something about Thanos today. I'm here to disappoint you, I'm just painting a garbage truck today. That's what we're doing. We're going to get ready for Thanos' arrival by getting the cleanup crew prepped. Whoop. Come here, garbage truck. There's no good handle for you. I didn't have a big dowel. Sneak back through. Touch this up. All right. So we've got the metals kind of blocked out here. Ready to go. So now, let me move my water cup. There we go. Won't be in the way now. So I'm just going to use a bit of black ink and a bit of brown ink to create a nice little steel weathering color. I need to open that because it's a new bottle. Oh, the next scenery pack. You gotta watch uh, Thursday. I'll spoil that. Dallas is gonna be painting. I think he's painting it. I don't know if he's. I don't think he's building it. I think he's painting it. He could correct me if I'm wrong though. Uh, but Dallas is gonna be showing off the construction kit here. Uh, not the construction kit. The space train. The cosmic train. On his stream. So like I said, we want to take a step back and kind of just focus on some cool terrain stuffs. So I'm doing the garbage truck and Dallas will be doing some cosmic terrain stuff. I don't know if Josh has plans to show off the cosmic mat anytime soon or not. That was a really fun project to work on. Um, oh no, my silver wasn't quite dry. That's okay. 
So we'll have to let that silver dry a little bit before we move on to our darker color. But that's easy enough. Okay. So, let's see if our ink is good. Still a little wet. So let's go ahead and just tackle. Normally I wouldn't do this, but, you know, we've only got an hour and let's demonstrate. So I'm going to switch back to my small, smaller brush. We're going to paint a window. Um, so what I'm going to use, I'm going to use this uh, Arctic Blue from the Scale Color range. Uh, I find like any kind of off, off white with a blue hue is usually a great place to start for windows, depending on what you want those windows to look like. Um, I'm kind of just going to go for a nice neutral glass color. So we're just going to like block this in. Being careful not to spill it over onto our yellows because we do want to be kind of clean here for sure. And I get really quiet because I'm like concentrating on my lines and stuff. Well, we wait for the ink to dry. This is normally why it's good to have a hair dryer if you want to move quick or you don't have multiple things. Especially if you're doing a lot of like wet colors, like you're doing a lot of inks, a lot of glazes, you definitely want to have that hair dryer handy. Or you want to have a second project that you can pick up and start painting. Well, you wait, kind of like what we did with the bases last week. Um, we've also noticed that it's been kind of damp around these parts up here in Seattle. We've had a lot of moisture in the air and stuff, so paints are definitely taking a little bit longer to dry than they normally would. Dallas lives right by the ocean, so things probably always take longer to dry for him, I don't know. All right, so we got that going on, we'll let that kind of dry out. We'll hit these ones over here. My intention is, is that once I've got the windows all good, I'm going to dark line them. So that will uh, allow me to create some differentiation between the glass and the cab, and it will give it a little bit of that comic book illustrated look while we still have our like natural rough colors. Because I know Damage Control, like you know, they had their they had their hero comics, and they're definitely they're definitely heroes. There's no question. City life could not exist without damage control, but their heroic job is a dirty job. They're not they're not going to be pristine. They're not worried about, you know, coming in with the crisp colors and all that stuff. So we're going to make sure that this truck kind of represents that. Value the dirt. The stench, the sweat, all that stuff, the markers of a hard of a hard job well done. As it were. our second coat. So I'm trying to do on this pass is because I'm doing multiple coats. I'm trying to remember which way my stroke went the first time, which was up and down. And I'm coming back through and trying to do the stroke the opposite way. So if I went vertical the first time, I want to go horizontal the second time. 
and this will help on these big flat surfaces kind of hide your lines as long as you keep your paint nice and thin. So you always want to try to reverse your strokes and that will that will help create a more smooth and even coverage for your coat. Alright, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, we'll let that blue dry. I mean you could make you can get eyes to it, give them a name. Like Herbert. Herbert the damage control truck. It certainly sounds like something that would happen. It seems legit. I'd buy it. Just going back here really quick with my silver. Touch up this area where my wash kind of pulled the paint off because we weren't dry yet. Well, let's be honest, a car with eyes and sentience is probably not the weirdest thing that you could imagine coming out in the Marvel Universe at this point. I think most of the people would just be like, yeah, that sounds about right. What else is new? Give me something to truly shock me. There we go. Okay. I'm going to go back to my big brush now. And I'm going to find, really quick, one second. Got some new paper toweling going on because I've used up the rest of them. We give them a mustache. We can do all kinds of things with this. Okay. I'm going to go to the big brush. I want to make sure that it's completely dry. Because I'm going to dry brush now. And a couple different ways to dry brush this. You could use the base yellow that we started with. And we could build up yellow colors. Um, Running away, I know. This is what happens when Josh holds a meeting 10 minutes before I have to stream. I, I, I come in unprepared. All right, so what I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for a kind of a yellow off-white, so an eggshell almost. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I could build up the yellows using, you know, like the base yellow, which was a mustard yellow. And then I could... Um, keep going that way. But if I had a sponge Dallas, I would add some stuff. Um, but what I'm going to do because I want some more, I want a more gritty kind of like quick realistic look is I'm just going to use an off white, um, which has a bit of yellow in it. And what's that that's going to do is it's going to let me just build up a really quick color. It's going to kind of add some brightness to it without having to build up layers of, of my base color, um, which will make it poppier and brighter, which would have been great for last month's challenge. Um, but I'm not doing last month's challenge. I'm doing kind of more of a grimy, quick-based uh, garbage truck. So I just have to find my color here. And I think we're going to use... So we're going to use some of this Thar Brown, which has a bit, of, um, a bit of yellow to it. It's kind of a bone color. So there's a little yellow mixed in, and I think that'll work great. It'll really help the, the stuff pop. So, oh dear. I'm just going to get this on the brush. Let me get rid of most of it on our paper. So this is dry brushing. You just, you know, lose most of the paint on your brush. And then you just start going over. And if you have too much, like I do right now, I want to rub it off. So I need to get rid of more paint. Because you want very, very little paint left on the brush. You want it to be a really light effect. You don't want to see streaks or anything like that. You just want to start going over it. And this will create some like nice highlights and stuff for you. Start building that color up. I think I have a sponge somewhere, Dallas. I think we can we can add some rust and and some some damage. 
I'm using a really light stroke as I go over it too. I don't want to press too hard with the brush. Um, but you can kind of see how that's giving it a really nice bring my lights over. That wouldn't really make a difference too, I bet. Whoop. So you can kind of see how we're getting a really nice highlighting effect now from that off-white as it comes through. And it's adding to those textures and I could even go so far as to like stipe a little bit of it on if I wanted to. But again, we're just looking for really like quick Easy, fast colors. And if I ever run out of paint, I can always go back. Load it up, wipe it off, back in there. And like the heaviness that you go to is really up to you and what you're looking for. Because the dry brush only hits the highest highs of the miniature and there's obviously little micro imperfections in the plastic, it's not actually smooth. That's part of how this technique works. And of course on really textured things like rocks or um, what else can you, you can dry brush really anything, but rocks are kind of my favorite, especially when it comes to terrain to dry brush. Like it's always so satisfying to just do layers of, of dry brushing. You can see how we're getting like these nice, so now we went from a flat yellow to kind of a dirty mottled yellow that had some depth and some life to it. Now we've got like some nice highs on here and they're a lot brighter, but we still have that yellow under hue. So it feel, feels like it's part of that truck. And we're coming together and it just looks like, you know, this, this girl's been put to work. She's, she's been doing stuff for a while. Ooh, got another hair. I think it's not pet hair, I think it's the brush. That's okay. Now we'll go back to this side. We'll reload the brush. So you kind of see how like we're just going really quick, we're going really fast, we're getting good results for what we're looking for. And this will look great on the table next to some characters and stuff. It's not going to overshadow any of them. It's just going to look nice and fun. So you can see how that's coming through again. We got some really nice textures and stuff. dry brush and building it up and again this is very much a how high do you want to go with it the more coats you do with it the brighter it's going to be so we're just going to hit the top one more time because that's where the sun would be so it should be a little brighter plus dry brushing is fun so there you go. So you can see that. You can see how we've got like these nice textures and colors going on. And we're like 70% of the way done with our with our garbage truck at this point. I hit that front cab a little bit more. Let's build that out just a little bit. Sides. Alright. So we're getting close. Grimy, gritty cab done. Um, if we wanted to, like maybe I'd come back through and do these little stripes as black. I think that's how it's done on the, the box, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, so our dry brushing there is done. Let's go ahead and see if we can knock out the wash on the back. Try to get this big old dry brush clean. There we go. So let's see if we're ready here to do some of this wash. Okay, there we go. Yeah. 
So again, this is just some black ink mixed with some brown ink. Kind of, kind of create a really gross, black, grimy look. I'm going to use the same technique that I did before, so I could just kind of leave this on. Um, as is and have it be really thick, but I'll probably go back through and just kind of tap it out a little bit with my uh, paper towel with my tissue to give it a little bit of that like texture and life. Get in there and get it nice and gross and gritty. This is the part, this is the business end right here. This is where all of that muck and grossness is going to go. So it's obviously not going to be very pretty. Even if the rest of the truck was pristine, this would still probably have some signs of work. Unless this bad boy was like fresh off the line. That did last like five seconds. Given the number of superhero battles. I don't think new trucks get to keep their sheen coat for very long. Really, really gross in there. Get all of that. Get up the sides. I'm just kind of staining the colors now. I'm getting it to be, you know, kind of get that life, get that wear and that tear in there. Then we go back through and dry brush it just like we did before with a silver um, and build that color back up. So at this point, come back in with my tapper and tap some of it out. that bed nice and textured and going so once that's dry we can go back through and dry brush it again you know I'm missing some spots in terms of like where that wash is going and stuff but again I'm not super super worried about it I'm kind of shocked that when uh, you know Tony Stark had had the axis event and he switched his switched his personality to kind of be a bit more of the, on the on the evil business side than the good business side he didn't actually go into insurance rather than extremists it seems like you know selling insurance to poor new yorkers as the chat points out that's that's what you really want to do what did i take this color out for that's not the color i wanted i want this color go back through i'm just going to hit this one more time then i'll grab a sponge because i believe i know where one is and we'll do a bit of like chipping and stuff. painted. There we go. I'm 
Well, so Red Red Death M. Um, we didn't use Sinister Six because that implies that there's six people and there's no guarantee that you'll have six people. So given that you may have a team of four or eight, I suppose if you really went crazy, depending on your choices, or, you know, seven or five, like is that the Sinister Six? So the idea being that, you know, if you want to create the Sinister Six, you can do that if you want to create some other band of foes to fight Spider-Man, of which there have been many team-ups to try to take down the wall crawler, you can do that too. Um, so it was really a question of flexibility. And then Web Warriors comes straight from one of the comic runs that happened after in the, the Spider-Verse event, and then Spider-Geddon, I think. They picked it back up again, which is, you know, a team of interdimensional spider people. Um getting together, joining up, and trying to make all universes slightly better using uh, the web of destiny in universe one, I think it was. One or zero, I don't remember. With Karn as the new weaver. Um, that was right before, I think, the that pre, pre, that was the precursor to spider Yedin. So we liked, we liked Web Warriors. It really opens it up again. It allows you to create all those teams that, you know, you think about. Kind of any team up of spider people, it's a good generalization. Spoiler alert, here's the Web Warriors leader. We've shown him, or her, them. There, there we go. We've shown them. All right, I gotta give you a sponge, and then we'll do some chipping effects. I have a sponge here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. So Dallas asked for it, so he's going to get it. So. Packing foam, you get this out of a lot of different places. Um, if you're, you bought miniatures before, you probably have some of this lying around. If you have a carrying case that is used to transport miniatures, you probably have excess of this stuff lying around. So this is really cool because if you rip it up and kind of get in there and rough it up a little bit, this is similar to the technique I used on the base last week. Um, but you kind of get it so that you have this nice little rough texture here. You can do it bigger or smaller or whatever. It creates a really nice chipping. So, if I want to do some chipping effect, what I'm going to look for is a nice dark color. Like... Uh, it's not quite dark enough. Mm. You want kind of a dark brown or a dark black brown? I might mix something. Here we go. It's so like this Arbuckle's brown right here. There's this nice deep kind of hue to it. Um, it's like a really dark brown black color. And this will kind of form the basis for our chipping. So what you want to do with it is get some on your palette. Find an open well here. So, you can use this to pretty much add chipping effects to just about anything. But, you put it on your palette, which is right here. You kind of get the foam. You put it in. And then you want to dab most of it off, just like you were dry brushing. And then you can come around. And wherever you think there'd be like chips, you can just go in, start tapping. And you can see, maybe, how I'm getting these nice little specks that look like dirt or rock chips. You see that? It's right along the side here. I'm getting this nice little like fleckled pattern 
and I can do it along like areas and then the more you do it obviously the stronger the result comes so like maybe like right there in that corner it got really beat up so I'm just gonna like keep flecking it until all that fleck comes in and you can see it along the sides and along the along here and of course we know that the wheel oil is gonna get really beat up so we can come in and we can like really mess that up just use a bit more paint on there I get it really fleckled and and gross or down here maybe by the door a little bit you know we're chipping where they're opening that door and closing it all the time so you can use this to kind of like add some textures and some dirt and stuff to your to your miniature as well and of course the bigger piece of foam you use like you can really just get in there and go wild if you want to um, and different types of foam will give you different like different effects so like if I really want to make this process like super fast and I want to like hit a large area I can just come in with like the whole thing just kind of bunched up like that and I can just start tapping in it just gets this really like random chaotic appearance which is really good for metals so that's like dirt and grime and chips and rust all of it all those techniques really work well with this um, another thing that you can do with it is you can do chipping really well so for instance same idea but I grab I grab some black metal or some like dark steel or you can use bright steel depends on how strong you want the effect to be I'm gonna go with some like I'm gonna go with some darker steel though again just get some on the sponge tap some of it off and then come in see like oh there's gonna be little chips right here and you can actually layer these on top of each other if you take your time and do it really well and I'll give you like this chipping effect because you'll have the primer and you'll have so you can see right there you can see that silver like especially along the side where I did a lot of it and you get this nice you get a nice steel chipping so the paint has been completely stripped away on those edges and you do this like just think about where wear and tear would normally happen so anywhere there's a sharp surface like a hard edge those are always prone to getting really chipped up and again part of your control is what kind of paint you use so the brighter the paint you use obviously the stronger it's going to stand out right here Not really good um, but you can use this on you can use this technique on like anything so if you want your Iron Man armor to be really chipped up and beat up the sponge technique works really well for that if you want to add dirt and grime to like boots or characters clothing or stuff like the sky's kind of the limit when it comes down to how you can use this stuff so you can see how we have this nice little speckling pattern going on there and it just adds a, it adds another element of that natural life to the miniature and to the paint job really quick and easy um, and so it's a great technique if you like things to be dirty and who doesn't like things to be dirty I'm actually one of them it, I've never been a huge fan <laughs> in all honesty of making um, my paint jobs grimy I like things to be clean and sharp and bright I like fast off the assembly line for most things it is like the penguin cigarette holder it's true um, I don't really need it but it's like comfort I just I can't paint without it being there I guess it's like where I am right now so we can tap these in
roughness like on the sides here. So they're probably like driving through a lot of stuff. So you can see maybe even on the flat here it'll show up really nice. So you can see how that modeling that I was getting a similar, like I did a similar effect obviously with Ooh, that came out a little strong. It's a little white for the finger, it goes away. And I was obviously doing this a little bit with how I was antiquing with the, um, and this is why I keep my brush. Because when I make a mistake, I just wipe it away. So when I was doing the antiquing with the, uh, the inks and stuff, I was doing a similar thing. Um, but there I was applying it all over the place and then I was kind of like modeling it off. Here it's a little different. So... So you can see our steels are kind of coming through, so I would dry brush these, but I'm running out of time. So the last thing I want to do is kind of just want to show you how to do a quick windshield. So we have our, our off-white blue, which is kind of serving as our base. I'm going to grab a uh, blue ink, and I'm just going to make a blue glaze really quick. And here we go. So I'm going to use some Inktense Blue. I'm just going to create a wash or a glaze. And I need a ton of this. And I might take a little bit of black too and just darken it down. This is blue is pretty blue. I want to some of a little, like a little blue blacky, I guess. A little bit more than I have here. Again, this is kind of going to be one of those the less precise you kind of are with it in a certain way, the better the effect is going to be. So I just want to come through. Oh, I need more water. There we go. I want to hit this up. And what I want to do is make sure that it doesn't pull on my yellows. I'm going to kind of like paint it on like this. Try to get it slightly even. And then I'm going to take a wet brush and I'm just going to kind of start playing with the ink and the wash and I'm going to start pushing it around. Kind of have it where I like it. I want it to be a little bit darker on this side than the other side. If I make mistakes, I can just wash it right off. And I'm just going to come through and I'm going to smooth it out. I'm going to go at an angle to kind of try to get that light streak that people often see. I'm just going to work with this. And then through with a clean brush and give it some of that grainy streakiness. And you can kind of see even though the even though the wash is still a little shiny because it's still wet, you can see how we're kind of like mimicking that that light streak. So and you can play with this as much as you want. Um, 
the more you kind of do your streaks, you know, you get them brighter at the top, pull them down, you can add more glaze. But the goal is to kind of like let that streakiness that normally you'd want to avoid work for you to get some of that light effect in there. And so when that dries, you know, it's going to mimic on the table having a light hit it. I'm sure it's not going to, whoop, let me turn off my light. Um, you know, it's not going to be like award winning, but it's there. So with that, I have two minutes left. Haha, -ha, Josh, I'm going to be on time today. So there's several more things that, you know, we do. We'd obviously have to hit this. We can do the tires, but the tires are just black. We do more steel here. We'd have to do our little Bulldog logo. But overall, you know, in about an hour or so, we've managed to completely knock out the entire cab and um, the yellow of the container, the trash container. We're probably one step away from really finishing our steel if we wanted to, because a quick dry brush on that just to kind of bring it back up and mellow out those inks and we're ready to go. And then we just have to finish the undercarriage, so the tires, and a lot of that's just blacking it out or making these things metal. Um, and from there, we can go as far as we want in terms of chipping, in terms of effects. You know, we finish out our windows really quick. But, not counting drying times, maybe 30 more minutes, and we have ourselves a finished garbage truck. So, there you go. That is, um, that, that is today's stream. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, Hope everyone's having having as much fun as they can, staying safe, um, obviously, uh, doing everything they can um, to continue to be part of the community, um, to be together, to come together, show each other love, respect, and appreciation like we all want, um, and we'll be good to go. So, again, I hope this, uh, this little tutorial kind of gave you some inspiration and showed you that it is possible to knock out some really fun and quick effects and have a little bit of fun making a mess. Uh, well, getting your terrain ready for the tabletop so that, you know, these little guys can come in and start fighting away on, uh, on the trucks. So, hope everyone had a great time. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Be careful. Um, be sure to check out all of our awesome, um, social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and, uh, of course, our website for more information and more cool stuff as Josh reveals things more and more and more. Uh, I hope you guys had a wonderful time, and I will see you on the next one. Be sure to check out Thursday 1 p.m. as Dallas streams um, from the safety of his house. He's going to be doing some awesome cosmic terrain for you guys. So I hope, uh, I hope you all had a good time. Look forward to that. He's going to be doing some really awesome effects. And, of course, hit us up on all the social medias with any questions you have or things you'd like to see. And be sure to watch out for more of those sweet Thanos spoilers coming your way whenever Josh uh, wants to be generous. So, Josh, anytime, boy. Um, we'll talk to you soon. You guys be safe. And uh, I'll see you next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Till then, bye, guys.